Okay, it's time for Advent of Code 2021, Day 16. Uh, if you don't understand what's going on in this video, everything's in the description. Let's go. Packet Decoder. As you leave the cave and reach open waters, you receive a transmission from the elves back on the ship. Beep, 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 beep. The, the transmission was sent using the buoyancy interchange transmission system. Bits. A method of packing numeric expressions into a binary sequence. Your submarine's computer has saved the transmission in hex. Right? Your first step of decoding the messages to convert the hex into binary. Each character of hex corresponds to four bits. Right? That's easy enough. Because uh, it's, just, it's just straight up. The bits transmission contains a single packet as its outermost layer, which itself contains many other packets. The hex representation of this packet might encode a few extra zero bits at the end. These are not part of the transmission and should be ignored. Interesting. So I guess the... Does that mean after you convert it? Let's see. The hex representation might encode a few extra zero at the end. These are not part and should be ignored. So, uh, oh, so the, this, no. I, I guess we'll have to think, see what that's all about. Uh, but I guess you just remove zeros from the end. If there's any zeros at the end, just get rid of them before you convert to binary. Every packet begins with a standard header. The first three bits are the packet version. The next three bits are the packet type ID. These two values are numbers. All numbers encoded in any packet are represented as binary with the most significant bit first. So a 100 becomes a 4. Yep. Packets with the, well, a, a 100 zero zero becomes a 4, right? 1, 2, 4. Um, packets with type ID 4 represent a literal value. I see. So you have a version, and then you have a type ID, right? So the version, our puzzle input is probably going to be a, a, a packet or series of packets, maybe. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a type. So you have to, for the different types, you're going to have to decode the binary in different ways, right? So... If it's type ID is 4, then that means the remaining bits are a literal value, right? Which become a single binary number. The binary number is padded with leading zeros until its length is a multiple of 4 bits. Then it is broken up into groups of 4 bits, each group prefixed by a 1, except the last group, which is prefixed by a 0. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> These groups of five bits immediately follow the packet header. For example, the hex string D2FE28 becomes D is 1101. See? And then 2 is 0010. F is obviously four ones. Right? Then E is three ones and a zero. 2 is 0010. And 8 is 1000. Okay? Uh, and then. Each, oh, what have I? Groups of four bits. Each group is prefixed by a one except the last group, which is prefixed by a zero. These groups of five bits follow the packet header. Oh, I see. So, right, uh, I don't see. <laughs> Oh, this is the so this is the hex that comes in. I got it. This is the hex that comes in. This is the binary that it turns into. The first three bits are the version. This is version six, right? The type one hundred is four. Type four, which means that this is a literal value because this is telling you type four, type four means, you know, 100 means literal value. Okay, so literal value, right? So these five bits, right? The binary numbers, padding zeros, right? 
code single binary neuro, binary neuro is padded with leading zeros. Multiple it, it's zero until its length is a multiple of four bits, right? So we look at this and we see, well, how many bits is this? To become a multiple of four, we're gonna need to add some zeros at the end, right? Okay, so we added some zeros, right? Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen. So to get fifteen is not a multiple of four, but uh, eighteen is, right? Um, four, eight, tw no, it's not. Until it's a each group is prefixed. Hold on. Oh, is this? Are these the zeros at the end we're supposed to remove? X representation of this packet might encode a zero bits at the end. These are not part of the transmission and should be ignored. So maybe these are the ignored ones. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen is not a multiple of four. I guess the other thing is, is broken into groups of four bits. Each group is prefixed by a one bit, except the last group, which is prefixed by a zero bit. These groups of five bits follow the packet header. For example, remember when code is single two is the binary number. Oh, it's not the packet isn't right. So. This is talking, it's, it's weird because I think we're being asked to do decoding, but this paragraph is discussing encoding, right? It's saying, ah, okay, we'll take this binary number, pad it with leading zeros, right? And then break it up into sections of four bits each and put ones in there, right? And whatnot. So... We're doing the reverse of what this just said to get the binary number that's been encoded because we're going to decode. So, so here's those groups of five bits after they've been encoded, right? See, so this this is, you know, right had a one appended to the thing here, right? This had a one stuck at the start of it, and this had a zero at the start of it, and that way you know that this was that that zero tells you ah this is the last four bit segment. Right, because if, if it wasn't the last four bit segment, it would have started, it would have been a, you break it into five bit segments, right? And you say, okay, well, does this one have a one at the end, of, uh, at the start? It does. Well, that means check, there's more. Oh, this one started with a zero. All right, well, then that means this is the last four bits. Ignore all the remaining bits, right? And then there you go. Um, and then you take these four bits these four bits, these four bits, this zero got padded at the start, so you can throw that out. So it's the, the number is one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, and then take those bits together, and then that is your, uh, is a bit labeled in right, the three version, okay? Five bits start with a one, and the last group contains the first four bits of the number, or more bits of the number, so there's a zero last group at the end are extra due to the hex representation to get ignored. This packet represents a literal value of the binary representation of, yep, we ignore the zero and you get a 2021. Every other type of packet, any packet with a type other than four represents an operator that performs some calculation on one or more sub packets contained within right now. Those aren't important. Those are for part two. Focus on parsing the hierarchy of sub packets. An operator packet, uh, every other type that's not four. Okay, an operator packet contains one or more packets. Okay, so if it's not a four, then we know it's an operator packet, but we don't know which ones are which operators. So like a, a, a three might be like a plus or a two might be a minus or a division or something like that, right? Um, but we're not worried about that right now. Let me tell you, what are some packets can with it? Right now, the, sub, the specific operations aren't important. Focus on parsing the hierarchy of subpackets. An operator packet contains one or more packets. Ah, 
to indicate which subsequent binary data represents its subpackets, an operator packet can use one of two modes indicated by the bit immediately after the packet header. This is called the length type ID. If the length type ID is zero, the next 15 bits are a number that represents the total length of the subpackets contained by this packet. If the length type ID is one, the next 11 bits are a number that represents the number of subpackets immediately contained by this packet. All right. Um, whew, got a lot going on here. Uh, after the length type ID bit and the 15 bit or 11 bit field, the subpackets appear. Here is an operator packet of this hex string with length type ID zero that contains two subpackets. So the length type ID is zero. So here's that length type ID here. So you can see here the type version is one. You can see the type is not four, it's uh, six. So that means we are in an operator packet. Because we're in an operator packet, we look here at the I, which is either zero or one. If it's zero, which it is, the next 15 packets are a number. And this number is telling us how many bits to read, right? Um, and that many bits, right, are subpackets, right? So this is 11011, contain the length of the subpackets, 27. So here's 27 bits, okay? The 11 bits in A contain the first subpacket, and then the 16 bits in B contain the second subpacket. Okay, but how do we know? So we know from this that the next 15 bits are gonna be subpackets. How do we know how many subpackets there are? It could be a single subpacket of 15 bits. It could be, right? Um, if it if it was one, it would just tell us, you know, the number of subpackets. But giving us the length and bits of the subpackets doesn't tell us how many subpackets. The 11 bits labeled A for a subpacket, and the little bit uh, a literal value representing the number 20. Okay. After reading 11 and 16 bits of subpacket data, total length indicated in L27 is reached, and so parsing of this packet stops. Okay, but I don't know how we know that there were two subpackets. I, I mean, we can read all this data, right? We can read the, it says 11 and 16 bits of subpacket data. Length of the subpacket in bits, 27. 11 bits in A is 10. And then 16, I don't know how we do that. After you let the total length indicated in L is reached, parsing of the subpacket stops. So we ignore all those bits. Here is an operator packet with the, with the one. Okay, so this one's gonna be easier to understand because you see there's a one here. And then you can see this says L, L, that's a three. And now we know that there are three subpackets. 11, 11, 11. Oh, okay. 11. Are subpackets always the same length? Like 11s? Sub, who said who said subpackets always had to be elevens? Where did it did it not say that? Subpacket. One or more subpackets contained within. Hierarchy of subpackets. Total length and bits of the subpackets. The number of subpackets. Okay. Did it neglect to tell us that a sub, right? It's like, 
that a sub packet has to be 11, but then why it is 16? Why is again this one be 16? Did you just mess up the instructions? Am I not? I got to read them again? I don't know. Sub packets indicated as reach, so parsing is right now. Parse the hierarchy of the packets throughout the transmission to add up all the version numbers. <laughs> That's the easiest part. Just adding the this part. Oh, but there's sub packets that will have version numbers. Meaning three complete sub packets. Oh. Hex encoded transmissions. Each sub packet is an operator packet that contains two literal values. This packet has a version sum of 12. Okay, so hold on. So you know so you get you 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 know that there are three Let's look at the first case with the bits. Okay. So we know from this that this string here uh, contains 15 bits, right? Because this is a, or 27. We know that this is 27 bits worth of packets, okay? Um, but we don't know how many. Okay, so we know that this is a version number, right? And that this is a type. Okay, and so type 100 means that it's a literal. And then we know, oh, and then the literal, I see, right, starts with, it only has one set because it's a zero here, right? And therefore, right, that's all there is. That's the end of the packet because there was a zero terminating on the literal, okay? So then we know that these remaining bits are now a new packet. And so here's a version number. Here's the type. It's also literal. And then here's a block that starts with a 1. So there must be another block. It has a 0. So that must be the end of this packet. And that's also the end of the, the whole thing. OK. Uh, and then you can ignore those trailing zeros there. Okay, so then here, right, we know that there are three packets, um, right? But we don't know how long they are. But I don't think it matters. Oh, it does matter because, for example, right, let's say, you know, down here in these bits, there was, like, even more data, right? Let's say there was, like, not just zeros here. Well, let's say, for example, you had this exact same data, but then this L here, instead of being a 3, just change this to a 0. This is now a 2. And it's telling you that in this data, right, there are two packets in this data. Well, that means, right, well, here's a version number. It's a type 100, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's it, because this is 0. So this is the last segment. And then, right, here's the, so you know you, got, you found one packet already. All right, keep going. You got all these bits. You got to find, you know, one more packet. Okay, well, here it is. Version, type, up oh, zero. Okay, that's the whole second packet. Throw all of this out. All right? If this is a two instead of a, instead of a three, it is a three in this case, because that, right? Then you, yeah, you would read the third packet. But if this is a two, you would throw away this part because you are only looking for two packets in the following data, okay? After reading that many sub packets indicated as reach, so parsing of the packet stops. Parse the hierarchy of the packets, add up the version numbers, right? So basically what you gotta do is first, you have to write a hex converter that will convert from hex to binary. 
And then you need to make a recursive uh, a packet parser, right? That takes any set of binary digits and parses it out, right? Gets the version, gets the type, right? And then uh, that parser needs to be like, hey, let's, you know, it's recursive, you know, right? It calls and uh, basically what it does is as it, if, if when it successfully completes parsing a packet, right, it will add that packet to a list of packets that you've sort of got globally, right, stored up. Um, if the packet, um, Uh, I guess we can make the packets into a hierarchy also, right? So let's look at the actual input. Is it one big packet? And it's only sub packets. There are no, it's not a list of packets. There are only sub packets. So there is a hierarchy to this. Uh, do we need to maintain that hierarchy for part two or not? We'll find out on that. I think I, I'm going to try to. So in that case, what you do is you parse a packet, right? And then if the packet has sub packets, right, you're sort of going to you're just going to make a list of uh, uh you know a packet, right? <laughs> and it's going to have sub packets, and the sub packets will have sub packets, and so on. Um. But you just call itself and add itself as a child of itself until eventually, right, your final packets are going to have to be the literal value type uh, at the very end, right? So basically, you're going to make a class called packet where you pass in a hex value. Uh, and then that's going to internally to the class build a data structure where it has... The class itself has a list of children of itself, which will themselves be instances of the same class, which will have children, and so on. And when you construct the class, right, it'll start building itself, and then for each sub-packet, it will just take... Um, hmm... So the issue is, um, you know, so if you have this class constructor, right, and you pass in, you pass in, you know, all these bits, well, you pass in this hex, it converts it to this, to these, or you pass in hex or, or binary, it doesn't matter. Maybe you have both constructors. Um, okay, so you pass in these bits to the constructor, right? Okay, it starts making a packet. It sees that it is, um, you know, zero here, right? And which means that it is an operator packet. So then it gets the, the length, right? Well, no, it's an operator packet because of the type is not four. This means that it's the, the type that tells you that there are 15 bits of packet length. So you get this length, and then you get your 15 bits, right? Now, the problem is, for the 15 bits, uh, you, if you just recursively, you know, pass this, right, up into the same constructor that you used for this originally, this is two packets worth of data, but what you actually want to get returned is you know, um, like a, a list of packets, right? As opposed to a packet with children, right? So I think what we need is we basically need a few different uh, constructors here, right? We just need to have lots of, of different constructors that will give us a packet, right? So the first constructor will be, I give you a hex, right? And you parse out the full uh, hierarchy. Um, I guess you're only ever going to, the input is only going to ever be one packet, not a list of packets. 
So the hex full hierarchy is basically the the main puzzle, right? And then uh, the next constructor that you'll make is right will be take binary, right? I have found a sub packet or set of sub packets, right? So I have some number of bits, and uh, I know that they contain packets, but those packets could be themselves hierarchical, right? But even though each of those packets might be hierarchical, I want them returned. I guess, do we trust? that the hierarchy won't matter for part two, right? Which, of knowing which packets were sub-packets. I'm going to trust... that in part two, we don't actually care... Um, which packet was a sub-packet of... which packet. I hope that doesn't burn me. <laughs> um, but yeah, pass in a, a, either a set of bits or a whole bunch of bits at a number, right? And then when you break it down, um, pass those breakdowns into the original constructor, right? Okay. I don't think there's any more explanation I can do up front. I'm going to get to work on this and see how I do. All right. Uh, I believe I have the right number for part one because all the test inputs were correct. 953. Let's try it. That's the right answer. Let's go over what I did in part one. Okay. So the first thing is I had to use a third-party library bit array to deal with all the, well, bit arrays, right? Uh, if I had to implement that bit array library, I'd be here all day. So it's not in the standard library, but you know, I still had to do a lot of work even using this bit array library. And I saw some people on the internet using NumPy, SciPy. So, you know, deal with it. But yeah, bit array library, very useful for this kind of problem. I learned all about it today. Okay. So let's start with our parsing of the input file. The, all we do in the input file is read in one line, and then we're using a util function from the bit array library called hex to ba that will take a hex string and turn it into a bit array. So let me demonstrate that actually. Uh, from bit array, import bit array util. So util that hex to ba, we can go like f, and that should give us a bit array of four ones, right? And an e, well, let's do a c, right? One, one, zero, zero. So perfect. And then the bit array itself, right? We can exempt, we can access the bits, right, directly and set the bits directly in, you know, one at a time. So that's how that works. So now we have this bit array, and all we do with that bit array, it's the parsed input here, is we're going to send it to the constructor of our class packet, right? So the class packet that we've made takes a bit array as the constructor, and it builds this packet object, right? Now, of course, there are three kinds of packets, the literal kind, the one that contains a defined number of packets, and the one that can... that uh, builds its well the one that builds its children from that has a, you, it you it knows its number of children but doesn't know how many bits those children take up and the one that knows exactly how many bits its children take up but doesn't know how many children there are so what we do is we set all these variables in our init right our original bits which is the ones passed to the constructor all right uh, the version so the version remember is always going to be the first three bits. So we can use the bit array to use a, a, a splitter here. We take the first three bits 
and we pass it to this util function ba to int that will take a bit array and turn it into an integer. And so that takes the first three bits and turns them into a normal old integer, and we put that in the version, right? So a 0, 0, 1 would become a 1, a 0, 1, 1 would become a 3. You get the idea. Same thing with the packet type ID. So the packet type ID is the next three bits. That's telling us whether it's going to be the literal packet type, the first container type, or the second container type. Um, and so it's three bits. We're going to chop off bits three to six from the original bit array and then turn it into an integer. And you can see that we've defined here, right? The literal packet type ID is four, right? Um, and anything else that's not a four is the is one is going to be one of these two, right? We'll get to that in a minute. So now we're putting in nuns and blanks for all these other variables um, that we may or may not use, right? For example, a literal type packet isn't going to have children; it's going to be empty. But I just want to have I just want to have that empty set there, right? A child, a one with children, isn't going to have a literal value. Just put that empty one there. We could have made subclasses but I didn't want to do that. Okay, so then we have this little wrapper thing, so that way when we're debugging and we're printing out you know, class objects, we can sort of see the version number of that packet. I think this is why Advent of Code put the version numbers in, not just because that's to add them up for the problem, but also so when you're debugging, you can see which packet is which. Like, oh, I see packet four is misbehaving, and so on. Without those, it would actually, I think, debugging would be quite a bit more difficult. So if it's a literal packet, it prints out like this. If it's the other kind, it prints out which kind and how many children it has. All right, so parse packet. This is the last thing our init function does. And it only passes it when it parses the packet. We're throwing away these six bits, right? We're only going to, we're going to throw the first six bits, throw them out because those were the version and the packet type ID. And we're going to only send in the remaining bits to the parser. All right, let's go down to the parser. Okay, so we got bits coming in here. Remember, first six bits are gone. Um, if the packet type ID that we determined up here right, is the literal kind, well, we know we've, we're the, all these bits that just came in are a literal packet, so we're going to call parse literal. We'll get back to that. If it's not a literal one, it must be one of the other kinds. So what we have to do is we have to figure out which of those two kinds it is. And remember, we're only looking at one bit to figure out wh which of the two can operator kinds it is. So if it's we only look at that first bit of, of this and we say, all right, well, if it's a Z, you know if it's the total length type, then we're going to use the total children parser. Right. This is the one where total you a total number of bits uh, is going to determine the container what's contained, and this one is the one where number length. So it's a number of packets that are contained, and we don't know how many bits they use up. And that's so we got three parsers here. So parse packet figures out which kind of parser to use, and sends the bits to the sub parser of whichever of the three kinds it's going to be. So uh, if it's the literal packet type, we just send all the bits we just got, right? But if it's one of the other types, we need to chop off the first bit, which was telling us the subtype, and send the remaining bits to the subparser. So let's look at our three subparsers. Here's our literal subparser. Uh, we take an empty bit array, right? And the stop bit is equal to one. Remember the way that the literal ones work. Let's go back. Uh, um, the way the literal ones work is that you iterate over blocks of five bits at a time. Where is it? Here it is. You're iterating over bits of five blocks at a time, five bits at a time, A, then B, then C, until the first bit of the block is zero. So here what we do is we're going to say, well, the stop bit is that first bit of the block. So it always starts at one because you want to, if it's not one, you're not going to read that first block of five. And we have an index of zero. So we say while the stop bit is still one, right, which it is from the start, read a block. So the way to read a block is first read the stop bit. So that's the first bit of the block, right, is the index. The index is zero. So it's going to be the first bit of this bit array. And then the literal is the next four bits. So it's index plus one 
index plus five. So it's going to be the next four bits after the stop bit, right? Are going to the literal, and we're going to plus equals the literal, right? So we're taking those. This literal starts empty, and we're taking just the four bits and adding them to the right side, right, of this bit array, and then we index plus five, and then we come around and we say, well, the block we just read. Did that start with a zero? Because if it did, we're not going to do any more blocks. We're going to go to the end. But if that block started with a one, stop bit is still one, right? Because we set stop bit here. And we're going to do all three steps again, right? Only this time, obviously, if we do it again, index is now five. This would be six. This would be 10. So you'd be reading the next stop bit and the next block of four. And you're building up four bits at a time into this literal here. And then once you finally read a block that has a stop bit, you break out of this loop and you say, well, my literal value, and we use that util function, bit array to integer, we turn it from a whole bunch of ones and zeros, right, four at a time, into an integer. And then that's we store it in the literal value on the class. Good. Then uh, extra bits, right? So after reading all the literal bits, there may be extra bits. It's possible. Uh, you know, some zeros hanging off the end. Usually, it's going to be zeros hanging off the end, but it, it might not be, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take those extra bits, whatever they were, and we're going to set them on the extra bits, right? And this is important for the container parts we're going to get to, right? Um, so let's go on, right? Parse total children. So this is uh, one where in which we know how many, right? We come in with a bit array, and we're going to look at the first 15 bits of that bit array here, right? Turn it into an integer using the util function. And that's going to tell us how many bits following the 15 bits, the initial 15 bits, right? We just look at, turn it to a number. And that's going to tell us how many of the bits after themselves are the ones that contain children. We don't. There could be 100 children in there. We don't know how many children are in there. There could be a zillion. There could be one. There can't, I guess there could even be zero, theoretically, right? It could just be zero, and then that's the end. No, no children? I, I guess that would... My, I don't know if my code would break on that. It might. It might not. Regardless, uh, we don't know how many children are in those bits, but we know how many bits there are. So what we do is we, we get that number, and then we look at our bits that came in, and we chop off the first 15, right? Get rid of those. This is the chopping off of the first 15 here, this first number. And then this is the grabbing of... The all, a, a number of bits equal to the number indicated by the first 15, right? So we grabbed all those bits, all right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to go through those bits and chew them up. We're going to chew them up. And this is where this extra bit starts to come in handy here, right? While there's any child bits, right? While there are any child bits remaining, right? And now any is important. So any is a Python... Uh, built-in function, right? Like it's built into the language. It's not even standard library. It's just like in Python. And what it does is it takes us, you know, a set of things. Uh, you can see it right here. Return true if bool x is true for any x in the iterable. So if the child bits has is empty, like there's no bits in it, of course it's gonna any is gonna be false because there's no bits left. But if the child bits only contains zeros, there's only zeros left, there's zero, 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 then any will also return false. Because remember, we're, this has to do with, it said in the instructions, right? There might be zeros hanging off the edge. And we're basically chewing through the child bits. We know how many bits we have. We don't know how many packets are in there. So we're just going to chew packets off, right, from the start of the child bits. And then the extra bits, right? All these three functions, the three parsers, return the extra bits that they didn't use, all the bits to the right that they didn't use up and generate packets from. And so we're going to look in those extra bits and say, hey, were any of, you know, if those extra bits are anything other than nothing or a bunch of zeros, we're going to chew, try to chew another packet. Okay? So we look at all those right, indicated things here. And we're going to say new child equals packet child bits. So we're going to call our, the, the we're building a packet ourselves, but now we're just going to start building another packet. We're going to be like, all right, start over from the beginning with those child bits as if it was a brand new packet, right? 
and do the whole this parsing stuff all over again, right? And so if that packet contains packets, contains packets, contains packets, it's just going to keep hitting. It's going to keep coming in here, keep hitting this until eventually you get to a packet that doesn't contain packets, and you're going to return actual packets bubble up, right, recursively, and we'll eventually have our new child packet that is fully constructed. And we're going to add that to our list of children. So every packet has a list of children, which is which are packets themselves, which have children, which are have packets. Until eventually, at the bottom of the tree, you have uh, packets that don't have children. Okay. So then we say, all right, well, look, you know, we made a new packet, right? Um, and we added it to our children of the current packet. Then this child bits that we're chewing up, right? is going to be equal to the extra bits. Whatever bits this packet didn't chew up, didn't use, that we sent to it, right? We sent to it a whole pile of bits. That pile of bits could have contained enough for five packets. We don't know. But it only it, this is only going to use enough to make one packet, right? And all those extra bits that get returned, right? Well, the extra bits that weren't used are going to be on extra bits. So we can look at that child we just made and look at its extra bits, put those as our child bits, come around to the top and say, hey, in those extra bits that this packet didn't use, right, is there anything other than a bunch of zeros? Or is there even one one anywhere in those? And if there is, we're going to take those bits and try to make another packet out of them, and so on, until the, the, this pile of bits that we got here, the child data length, no longer contains any bits or only contains zeros, and then anything, what's left over? Right? What are the extra bits? Well, the extra bits aren't those zeros. The extra bits, I've actually messed this up. This is a bug I had to fix. Um, I had a initially, the code I had here was extra bits equals, right? Uh, new, like child bits, like the new child extra bits. It's like, no, that's just a bunch of zeros or nothing. The extra bits that we want here are actually everything that comes after this block, right? If this tells us, hey, make children out of the next 100 bits. Well, we want to take, you know, all the bits that come after those 100 bits, if there are any, right, are the ones that we want to be used by our parent to keep making packets out of. Not us to keep making packets out of, but whoever made us should be looking at those bits to make more packets. So it's 15 plus the child length on the left side. Everything, see, this is, right, so you get the 15, you get from 15 to the end, and then everything after that are the extra bits that get sent up. Okay, so this is how to create packets when the um, when you know how many bits, but you don't know how many packets. You just keep chewing packets until you can't make any more. Okay, so what if we know the number of packets, but we don't know the number of bits, right? Well, what we do is we it's said to read 11 bits, not 15. And that's going to give us a packet count. And that tells us how many packets we're going to make. Right? We don't know how many bits they are, but we know how many we're going to make. And we know that we can chop off those first 11 now. right? And we know that those bits, everything after those first 11 bits, is potentially bits that are going to be used in our packet count. Right? We might not use all of them, but we're going to use, right? The, we're going to start at the start and see how many we can make. So we know, let's say we want to make three packets. Packet count comes out to be three. The first 11 bits contain a three. We throw away the first 11 bits. We look at the remaining bits and we say four. Well, we can actually change this to an underscore because we don't. Uh, the X was in there for debugging purposes. There we go. So underscore in range is when you don't want to actually use the value. You just want to do something that some number of times. So we're going to loop that many times and we're going to make that many packets. We're going to say new child equals packet child bits, right? We're going to chew the packet off the, fr the front of the bits, right? We're going to add it to our list of children. And then we're going to do the same thing. Child bits equals the extra bits. So all the bits that were after that, are, we're going to try to make another packet. But then we're going to, even if there's a crap ton of bits left over, right? We're going to stop after that many packets have been made, right? We're going to make this many packets and we're going to stop. And what are our extra bits? Our extra bits are whatever is the child bits, right? Which is the extra bits, right? We Every time we've got this big string of bits, you chew one off the front, you chew two off the front, you chew three off the front, whatever is left, you stop chewing. It doesn't matter if there's a whole ton of good stuff left, 
right? You stop chewing, and you return that as the extra bits that will be used by the parent packet to make, you know, the siblings of this current packet. All right. And now the final bit of interesting code is the total version number. So this is how to get the actual answer, right? We have to sort of go through all the children and add and recursively add up their versions. So you say, all right, what's my version, right? My version is some number. And then you say, all right, well, uh, go to all my children. Right? And right, 4C in self.children. Look at all my children and get their total version numbers. Call this function again, recursively. And then sum them up. So it's like if I have three children, they each have total version numbers, which they're going to get by adding up their children, which they're going to get by adding up their children. At the bottom, we know at the bottom, there's, there's packets with no children. So eventually, they'll actually return numbers, and the top packet will get its total sum, add it to its own version, and return that to get your actual answer. And so all we have to do to get our answer is packet equals packet parsed input, part one result equals packet dot total version number. And there you go, you have your, you have your answer. All right, and now let's read the instructions for part two. All right, now that you have the structure of your transmission decoded, you can calculate the value of the expression it represents. Literal values represent a single number as described above. The remaining type IDs are more interesting. Here we go. Packets with type ID 0 are sum packets. Their value is the sum of the value of their sub packets. If they only have a single sub packet, their value is the value of the sub packet. All right. Packets with type ID 1 are product packets. Their value is the result of multiplying together the values of their sub packets. If they only have a single sub packet, their value is the value of the sub packet. So I'm already very happy here. We did part one in a way that's going to make part two easy because we could have done part one just by building up a list of all packets, but by maintaining the hierarchy of the packets with the children, that is going to make part two simpler, way simpler. Okay. Their value is the values of it. Yeah. Packets of type ID 2 are minimum packets. Their value is the minimum of the values of their sub packets. Packets of type ID 3 are maximum packets. Their value is the maximum of the values of packets. 5 are greater than. The value is 1 if the value of the first is greater than the value of the second. Otherwise, their value is 0. They always have exactly 2. That's good to know. Packets with type ID 6 are less than packets. Their value is 1. If the value of the first is less than the value of the second, other packets always have exactly two. Packets with seven are equal to packets. Their value is one if the value of the first is equal to the second. Otherwise, the value is zero. They always have exactly two. Using these rules, you can now work out the value of the outermost packet. Okay. So here's our, I believe those were the sample data. Let me, right. And then how do you get, if you evaluate the expression represented, by your hex encoded bits transmission. All right, uh, I'm gonna get to this. I know exactly what I'm gonna do and I don't think it's gonna take all that long. All right, I believe I'm about to get the right answer for part two. Let's see, that's the right answer. Let's go over what we did in part two. So let's get this out of the way and that out of the way, all right. So all we had to do was we added a function to our packet class called value that would return the value of that packet, right? What's the value of this packet? Uh, and then just like the total version number, we recursively call version on your children, right? So, and then combine them. So here's we go. If the packet is the literal type, right? The one that's just a number, obviously, just immediately return that number because that's the value of that packet, right? It just contains a five. Okay, if it's not a literal type, we're gonna need to know the values of the children in order to figure out our own value. So we're gonna get our child values, c.value for c and self.children to make a list of the values of all our children and collect that together. And then we can figure out our own version and return that, right? So if our type is in value operators. What is value operators? Well, I made this thing up here, 
called value operators. It's a dictionary, and it made constants for all the different types, all seven of them, right? Including the one we already had. Yeah, so it's eight. And I said, look, the sum packet type uses the sum function, right? The product packet type uses math.prod. The min packet type uses this min function, and the max packet type uses the max function. So there's four different, right? They all work the same, right? No matter all four of these different types of packets, all take all the values of all the children, however many children there are, one, two, 100, zero, and apply some function to that collection of children. So I made a dictionary where we can take the type, look and use, pass it into here, and get that function back. So now down here again in the value function, we say, all right, look, if the packet type ID is in, if it's one of those four, then all we have to do is do a lookup, take value operators, pass in that type ID. So this will return that function. And then the parameter to that function, parentheses, right? Child value. So this is basically the same as like, you know, return min child values, right? Because self.value operators, self.packet type ID. So this first line here that I'm, that I'm currently moving my cursor around, that's gonna return min, the function min. And then, you know, min child values is gonna give us the smallest one. So we can handle all four of those operations because they all work the same way using these two lines. All right, well, what if it's one of the last three? the greater than, less than, or equal to. All right, well, we've got those handled with three if statements, right? We've got to handle this with four if statements, but I found a way to, I could do it with two lines, so why would I do that? But these three, it, because it's these operators here, right? I mean, we could have used, um, you know, defined three more functions, right? And added those to our value operators, but there weren't really any there might be a function out there that make that says is everything in the uh, list equal to each other but you know i was i was lazy so i didn't want to look it up i just did this three if statements it totally works cuz you see i saw that i got the right answer so so if the packet type id is the greater than kind well then we're going to we're guaranteed to only have two values in the children first of all according to the instructions but not only that uh, we it doesn't matter because we can just look at the first child and say, is it bigger than the second child? If there happen to be bad input with more children, we'll correctly ignore them. So if it, it, this the ch first child is greater than the second child, 0, 1, this greater than sign will return true. And in Python, if you pass a Boolean to the integer function, it'll turn into an integer. So a, a true will become a 1 and a false will become a 0. So according to the input, uh, it says here, uh, here, nope, where was it? Down here. So, got it. Uh, <laughs> if the value of the first packet is greater, right, then the value is one. Otherwise, it's zero. And the same is true for these, one or zero. So, if it's greater than, right? It's a true, which is a one. Otherwise, it's a zero. If it's less than, it's a true, which is a one. Otherwise, it's a zero. And if the two of them are equal to each other, it's a one. If that's not, it's a zero, right? Because we're converting a Boolean to an integer. So now any packet can return its own value. And its own value is, this, you know, basically either its own value because it's a literal or the values of its children right, according to whatever this mechanism is, right? And it's going to go branch out to all the children until it hits the bottom where all the children are literal values. And then those are going to bubble all the way back to the top. And you return, right, you're going to return your own value, whether it's here, 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 or here, right? One of these five returns is going to happen. And then down here, part two result equals packet dot value. And so, boop. There you have it, 953 for part one and 246-225-449979 for part two. We got the right answer.